Well, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. Today we're going to take a look at a simple solar setup. A lot of people are intimidated by solar power and how it works, but I'm going to show you today how simple it is. Anybody can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Remember the old saying, if you think you can or think you can't, you're right. You're going to see how easy this is. Right out here in the middle of the desert. I've been wanting to make this film for a long time, but it's been so windy and so rainy here in Quartzsite, Arizona, that I had to put it off. But today it's, it's quite windy, but not like it's been. So we're going to uh, dive right into this. I'm going to show you the components of a solar system. There's four major components. We're going to look at that. And we'll take a look at the three elements, the three basic elements of electricity. That's watts, volts, and amps. Let's get in and take a look at our system here. First thing we're going to take a look at is our solar panel. This is a 195 watt solar panel. And remember what watts are, right? From the film you just saw, that's the whole thing. You have to connect your battery first to the solar uh, charger. The solar panel, in order for it to do its job, it has to have more volts than the battery. You look at it, kind of look at it like an air compressor. If you want an inflator tire, you have to have more air pressure in the air compressor than you do in the tire you're trying to inflate or whatever it is you're trying to inflate. The solar panel actually produces 23.5 volts. It goes into the solar charger exactly that it controls the volts that go into the battery. Without the solar charger, if you connected the solar panel directly to the battery, it would burn it up because that battery would be getting 23.5 volts. So how do you determine what size solar charger you need? That for one, every 100 watt, you'll need 10 amps of solar charger. If you had a thousand watts, you need at least a hundred amp solar charger. In this case, we have almost 200. We have 195 watts. We will need at least a 20 amp solar charger, which is what What this is that's a 20 amp solar charger this is an MPPT solar charger what that means is maximum power point tracking it is the best solar charger that you can have but this is a 30 amp solar charger right here charge controller that you can get for under ten dollars this is a PWM solar charger it's they're not as efficient as the MPPT they don't do well in uh, certain lighting conditions and they charge slower but they work and they're cheap so let's get on to some other aspects here that is a 100 amp lithium ion phosphate battery right here not going to have any problems with a lithium ion phosphate battery if you don't overcharge it and you don't let it get too hot and that's why you see all these troubles not only with lithium batteries but any battery that's overcharged and gets too hot you're going to have a problem with it. If nothing else, you're going to degrade your battery. So you don't want to do that. You don't have to have a battery this big. If you're just out tent camping and you just want some electricity to charge your devices, maybe you want some lighting, maybe you want to run your laptop, this sort of thing. Let's take a look at our inverter. But the key word here is pure sine wave. That which you get from the power company. If, if you are not powering sophisticated equipment, like computers and and uh, some smart TVs and I have a residential refrigerator and it actually has a little computer board in it so I don't want to run it off 
just a regular inverter. I want pure sine wave inverter. But you don't have to have this. You can have a cheap little 600 watt inverter that will uh, charge, like I say, charge all your devices, uh, even uh, uh, operate a television for it. Let's go back to watts, volts, and amps. Let's take a look at watts. You can look at almost anything in watts, volts, and amps. How about a train going through a tunnel? The tunnel is the electrical cable. The train itself, the entire train, is the watts. That's the work, that's the, the full power comparable to a solar panel. The volts are the wheels on the ground, the wheels on the track, propelling the train through the tunnel or the electrical cable. And what are the amps? That's how fast the train is moving through the tunnel or electricity is moving through the cable. Now the point of telling you all that right here, the more watts you add, the more power you have. So the more panels you add, the more power you have. Your voltage will stay the same, but your ability to do work will double if you add one, another panel to this. Your volts will stay the same. Charge controller you need is to look at your wattage. You have a 200 watt solar panel. You'll need 10 amp solar charger for every 100 watts. It's just that simple. It really is that simple. It's not hard at all. This solar panel is a DC, direct current solar panel. Incidentally, that's the uh, electricity that uh, Thomas Alva Edison developed back in the 1800s. We're out here in the desert, right? Let's see what we can do here. We turn our inverter on, plug up the fan. Can we run a hair dryer at the same time? Let's see, we're at 13.5 volts. You can only run it for so long. This is probably 1,500 watts. You'd be able to run this about 45 minutes before you ran the uh, battery completely down. And you don't want to do that. So let's see if we can run a hair dryer. So we're going to turn on our hair dryer. Keep that on the volts and you'll see how they drop. Consider. Now remember, we can run this hair dryer as long as we have enough power in the battery. That solar panel will continually resupply this battery just a lot slower than if you had three or four of these solar panels. Let's see. Up. See the drop? That's on low. Let's put it on high. We run a fan in our hair dryer. But it took so much energy. Right now we're pulling about 450 watts. Let's see if it can take high for any amount of time. Fifteen hundred watts we were pulling. Let's start out from the beginning. You take your pure sine wave inverter. Two thousand watt. This is a cheap Chinese job. I've been running a cheap Chinese job on this unit for five years. It's still working fine. You simply do your hookup back here with the appropriate cables. That's all going to depend on uh, how much, how, what size your inverter is and uh, what size battery in your inverter. That's, that's what's going to make the difference. We've connected our negative to the battery and our positive to the battery, and I've connected the the uh, salt the and we connect the charge controller to the battery second second. I just put some clamps on there for demonstration purposes, but these two uh, come around and go into. I made the little stand here, just and here they connect into the battery positive, and the battery negative, the solar panel battery, or the solar panel positive, and the solar panel negative. It's really quite simple. It is not hard to do. You take a look at the solar charger, and you can see that uh, 
we're making uh, energy. We're actually from the solar panel to the solar charger to the battery. We're making energy. We are inflating. the battery right now we're filling it up we're putting energy in the battery now we have our inverter connected to the battery right connect to the battery and now we can use our energy appropriately so that's a, a battery bank this this particular system is what I had on hand this uh, panel here uh, is about $170. This is about the same, so that's about $350 or $340. This battery is right around $2, uh, so that's about $540, and this is about $2. So you're talking about $700 for this setup, $700, $800 for this setup, but you don't have to go that high. Okay, let's do a recap here. You've got your pure sine wave inverter. It doesn't have to be pure sine wave. You can buy a really cheap 600 watt inverter, but it's best to have something that uh, is the cleanest energy you can get. You got your inverter. We've got your battery connected to the inverter. It's right here. We've got your solar charger, charge controller, connected to the battery. You do that first, and then lastly, you connect your solar panel right here to your solar charger. This is made by Renergy. I like the Renergy. This is a, a 20 amp MPPT charge controller. I never had any trouble out of these. Our storage power. This is for storage. This is for application. This is to control the system. And this is your watts. This is your power that's going to go through the charge controller into the battery, connect to the inverter. Incidentally, you hear people say we run off solar. You're not running off solar, you're running off battery. It's just solar is how you're charging it. You can charge it various ways. I hope this has helped. It hasn't confused you. It can be a bit intimidating. Don't let that happen to you. It doesn't need to be. You can have lights you can charge your devices you can have i run this whole this entire unit this entire rig off of solar we've been out here in the desert for two months without electricity without being on the grid it's quite a relief to be able to do that i also have a little generator a little 2200 watt generator in that box right there and that is for cloudy days I top off our batteries because they don't get fully charged when it's just overcast, cloudy, rainy. I also have an onboard generator and I have a charger, a lithium ion phosphate charger that I can charge my batteries with. If you want to go out camping and boondocking, which we love to do, it's just nice to have electricity. You can live without it, but you know, I just can't imagine it. So I hope this has helped. I hope I haven't confused you. I'm uh, appreciative of uh, all the people who subscribe to this channel. There have been quite a few who've uh, picked up on this channel. I want you to support this channel. I would like you to subscribe to this channel. It helps keep us going. I love making movies for you. I'm not getting paid for any of this. I just do it for the love of sharing what I have learned and I have learned so much from YouTube. I started out as a YouTuber looking at uh, all these YouTube videos on how to do things. I don't know what I would have done without it. I learned so much from all the people who are YouTubers. So I want to thank you again. Be sure to subscribe. And we'll see you next video in about a week. And I thank you. As you can see, this is not a complicated setup. It's quite simple, actually. You can do this. I promise you can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. There's no reason for you not to have electricity. You can do this. If you've got a Class C or Class A, a travel trailer, or, or whatever you've got you're camping with, and maybe it's not just for camping. Maybe you're home. 
Maybe you're in a place where you lose power all the time. That happens. This is a nice little rig right here. Even if just one battery. The more battery, the more storage you're going to have. The more solar panels you have, the more watch, the more power you're going to have. And it's just a great little system. A 2,000 watt inverter that will run just about anything. 2,000 watts, you can run a microwave with this. A toaster. I was out here making toast earlier. You'd run a hair dryer. Only for a few minutes though, but you can do it. You could run, uh, actually, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Stand by, let me show you something. I know what it looks like. See that little, that little window air conditioner right there? I put that in there years ago. It runs off solar. During the summer, you get a lot of sun. The batteries get really get built up. They really get pumped full. And we run this little air conditioner, this little 6,000 BTU air conditioner. It's 4.5 amps. Remember what amps are, right? Remember what we saw? It's 4.5 amps. And it keeps our bedroom, that keeps our bedroom cool at night. We set it about 68 and it'll run all night long. It'll cycle on and off. And we'll still have battery in the morning. In fact, we run this at night, every night, just the fan. We never lose battery. We get close sometimes. As the days got shorter, the closer we would get. Actually, that's not true. We did, we did uh, get low battery one time and it, and it cut off. That's not good for your system. But this little thing right here, it's, it keeps it so cool in the summer when we're boondocking. If you're thinking about doing any kind of solar setup, don't hesitate. Go for it. 